All right, happy Friday, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webinar. My name is Elizabeth Michael, and today we've got Dave Dempster, SVP, and Sam Mehta, CEO of Verity Global Solutions here to look forward to 2022 and line out five ways labor outsourcing and automation can help you crush margin compression in the new year. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Dave and Sam. Take it away, guys. Hey, thanks, Elizabeth, and we uh, appreciate everyone being on the call today. So, you know, we want to start off with the bad news first, then work our way into the good stuff for you. So, you know, I just wanted to do a level set for everyone in terms of why we're talking about margin compression. So there is a recent study by Fannie Mae that uh, basically mortgage bankers are saying it's not getting better anytime soon. Uh, virtually about two thirds of all mortgage bankers are saying they expect margin compression to continue for some time and uh, you know they don't see a lot of uh, change in that. So I thought it'd be interesting just to look at how profit margins have changed just to kind of really uh, help you fully visualize this. So if you look at Q1 2021 versus Q2, uh, Q2 that was when we had a significant fall off in the refi business and mortgage bankers felt it. So your average profit, it dropped from 3,361 down to 2,223 in only one quarter, uh, which is about a 40% drop or $1,338 alone on average. Uh, measuring that in basis points, 52 basis points is going to come out depending on average volume, $1,338, oddly enough. So, uh, you know, what does that really mean to a lender's bottom line? And, and that's where you really look at it and you feel what this means. So an average lender is about, uh, according to the MBA, is somewhere between 1.3 to 1.5 billion in annual production. So roughly 500 loans. So if you look at that number, that's about $669,000 right on the bottom line that disappeared. No difference in effort, no difference in work effort. It just profitability just isn't the same. And you annualize that, of course, that's over $8 million to the average lender. So, you know, when we look at that, you've got to figure out what can I do as a lender to change that? What can I do to be more competitive? What can I do to cut those costs or find ways to improve my turn times, my customer service, whatever it is that makes you more competitive? So, you know, just a couple of things. Uh, the MBA uh, is basically to run a number of analytics against this. They like analytics, right? So, you know, the first thing that mortgage bankers said, oddly enough, the real reason for the reduced margins is competition. So, but that makes sense. If you think about reduced production volumes, the lenders are still the same. They're still out there vying for that same amount of business. It just is much more cutthroat. There's no easy business. And, you know, for the most part, mortgages are a commodity. And if you can't compete on efficiency, on customer experience and some of those things, it's, it's a tough business. So that's, that's significant. Obviously, uh, the move from a refinance market to a purchase market has had the big impact. And the other place we look at, it's just labor costs. If you look at the overall labor costs today, the availability of resources, and the fact that there is really a finite pool of people available that are skilled in these particular functions, whether they're underwriters or whatever it is, the function they're doing, there's a finite group of people and lenders are frankly just stealing from each other That's because that's the only way you can effectively get good people. So that puts you at risk, labor costs are high. So we wanna talk a little bit about maybe some of the things that you can do to improve efficiency, to improve your turn time, to improve your customer experience and deal with labor costs. So with that, Sam, I'm gonna ask you to talk a little bit about some of the things you're seeing in the market and ways lenders can improve margins. Great, thanks Dave. And thank you everybody for joining today. Um, so yeah, the whole issue of uh, margin compression is is back. We had a, a reprieve from it during um, 2020 and uh, 2021. Slowly, it's starting to be a topic of discussion with all our clients. Um, so um, you know, we came up with uh, 
a few ideas or tips to to think about as as you think about your 22 and and beyond and um some of these things are probably you know common sense and maybe a good reminder or hopefully you know it, it, we hope you can have some good takeaway actions from this from this webinar uh, but the one uh very important one is uh you know, essentially labor labor is a huge cost component for loan production and uh, what we recommend to our clients is to do what we call a high performance activity analysis and uh, i'll talk to you more about that in the next slide and um, the other few areas to look at is you know with, with covid and the ability to work remotely uh, it's become very easy to to look for uh, the right skill for the right price uh, no matter where it is in the world. So that's something else that you can think about. Uh, there's multiple um, functions that can be outsourced or automated that uh, a lot of folks haven't thought about. And we can talk about that a little bit. Uh, automation clearly is a, is a huge uh, uh, driver, a huge component these days in improving and optimizing processes. So we can talk about that some more. Um, and the uh, other piece is thinking about attrition, uh, which today attrition rates are very high and the ability to hire, retain, um, and, and even you know the, the fees people are paying to recruit people are, are pretty significant. So that's something else to think about as you think about your margins. And these are all the areas that we work with a little bit. So um, in terms of uh, labor optimization, uh, one of the things that uh, we uh, discuss with our with our clients is, you know, when you look at what goes into producing a loan, you know, imagine it's a uh, hundred pieces that you have to do in order to perform a loan. You really should be looking at how you can do each piece for the right price, and when you do that, then you've got the most uh, cost competitive loan production. So what we mean by that is, you know, if you consider um, uh, an expensive, a very expensive resource in your company, what well, the highest value for that particular resource is, if you were to look at all the work that they're doing during the day, well, are they doing the highest value work? And, and if there's work that can be done for a, um, uh, if there's work that they're doing that's below their uh, you know, pay rate or hourly rate, then you should be outsourcing or automating it. And that's kind of the premise of what we're going to talk about here a little bit. And also an important consideration is the same employee that you want doing the highest value work should be doing it for the most hours in a day for you to get the maximum ROI and the best margins for uh, the labor cost. So uh, as we talk about the high performance activity analysis, you know, just to re refresh, everybody knows this, but you know, assume you have a hundred thousand dollar employee with some benefits, bonuses, say it's one hundred thirty-five thousand. Well, the hourly rate for that person is about sixty-five dollars an hour. Uh, you know, we encourage you to uh, think about uh, think about your labor for, on an hourly equivalent because that actually makes it easier for you to catch and spot areas that could be improved, optimized. Uh, when you look at your whole workflow you know sam as i look at that uh the thing that jumps out at me is that that whole point of being focused on the highest value work you know you look at uh and i know you'll probably talk about this later but you know your underwriters and underwriters are one of the most uh expensive resources in an organization mm -hmm. and if you think about what they do most of them spend a lot of their time not making credit decisions so what that really does, you know, they've got, they make a credit decision, uh, they underwrite a loan every two to three hours. And if they were focused on just making credit decisions and not chasing paperwork and doing other things, that number would probably increase pretty significantly. What do you think? Absolutely. And that's one of the things I'm going to talk about in, the, in, in a couple of slides after this is exactly that, as to how you can, um, you can optimize your underwriting process such that your underwriters are spending the most time in the day and uh, doing the highest value work. And, and that's how, uh, that's kind of the premise of the entire thing. So this is uh, going back to the analysis, the high performance activity analysis that we talk about. It's pretty, it's pretty basic, but probably a good refresher for most is if you were to 
track. If you were to, to log for a week or two weeks or a month or whatever that comfortable time period is for you to make a note or the employee take a note of all the work they do during the day. Uh, and if you were to go back and review it and then and, and basically highlight the areas in green as things that correspond with the employee's particular hourly rate and orange is, is things that work that somebody else could potentially be doing because the rate, uh, it doesn't correspond. If you, if you have a $70 employee doing $20 hour work, that's what the orange is. Well, that, that should be something to look at. So the point of the entire exercise is, okay, I've tracked it for a month. I've got my greens, got my oranges, everything in orange. Hey, is that something I can outsource or automate is really what you should be looking at to get the most cost competitive uh, uh, labor cost. So um, the <clears throat> so basically, this is just going back to the whole conversation around uh, once you identify those those items in orange, uh, you know the ability for you these days to be able to utilize technology and be able to go offshore for doing the work at a much much more cost competitive price point is available to you and. Uh, that is actually uh, a, a, a huge consideration now, uh, especially when you're looking at margin compression. So this is just, uh, just another little pictorial or a graphic on the same thing we talked about was, you know, with our clients, the onshore team is essentially, you know, uh, doing the most strategic, you know, critical thinking tasks, focusing on the borrower experience, and spending the most time focusing on growth and work that corresponds with the high hourly rate. And our team is doing checklist-based, SLA-based work, repetitive work, and a lot of staring compare functions and uh, automation. You know, Sam, what, what do you see as the most successful lenders when they're offshoring or using a, you know, an external workforce? You know, who are the ones that are most successful? What do they do? What do you find? Is, is it that they do, how do they work with our team or anyone's team uh, to make it a successful venture and to really optimize it? Because there are concerns, people, you know, they, they do realize a lot of these folks have a different zip code and, um, you know, they don't have a Southern accent. So, you know, what do they do to really optimize those relationships? I'm glad you asked that question because that's pretty. That should be a pretty relevant takeaway for a lot of folks that 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 watch this uh, watch this webinar. Is that there are some critical success factors in making something like that work. Uh, one is clearly the uh, the owner uh, of a, a mortgage, uh, the owner of a of a mortgage company, or an executive should definitely be somebody that's uh, on board and uh, championing uh, a, a, a change because this is a business transformation uh, uh, event, right? Because you've got a, a, you're going from a domestic team to a global team, right? And there is typically a tendency to think about um, a service provider uh, like Verity as somebody who is somebody just producing work, right? And, and while that is valid, uh, a, a really big part of the success really is all about the change management, the integration and how closely the teams work together. And it, it requires a changing, uh, a change in thought process, uh, uh, both on the client side as well as on our side. And it's no different than um, bringing out a new employee in a company. You know, you have to onboard the team, you have to uh, show them essentially the ropes, how you do things. Um, uh, and uh, that is how it works the best. You know, we our uh, most successful engagements are ones where, uh, you know, our, our clients, teams are working directly, whether it's via Teams or, or Slack or, or any of those means and uh, working with uh, the global team, like it is a team, like their own team in their office, right? And then you see you see amazing results out of something like that. I don't know if I answered your question, but those are those are pretty critical no, success factors. That's right on it because I think you're right. Is you know the companies that basically look at uh, their offshore resources, just an extension of their team, they yep. have the greatest success that I've seen pretty consistently. 
Yeah, so we have clients that we have clients that have worked with us for years because they adopted that process early on, and uh, it has made a massive difference to their operations. Huge. Yeah. So this, so this uh, looks like a, a work, I'm sorry, Sam, I was going to say, it looks like you've uh, got a workflow here related to responsibilities and, and uh, tasks that different people perform. Yeah, so not going to spend too much time uh, essentially PowerPointing people to death here. But the idea here is as you look at the loan origination process, you can kind of see how the client, uh, client's team integrates with the Verity team. And you essentially pass the baton back and forth as you run through the entire process, you know, down uh, down to the finish line. And uh, you know, some of the some of the things you can think about is, you know, we have uh, functions around each department that the client's comp uh, organization would have around disclosures, setup. Uh, actually, Dave, if you can go to the next slide, uh, we have uh, you know underwriting, closing docs, shipping, etc. So these are just some basically core origination type functions for which we have developed a set solutions uh, where we perform exactly what I mentioned earlier in terms of checklist SLA based work and uh, basically provide lift to the domestic uh, client side uh, employees to be able to do their highest value work. And as an example of that, uh, like I mentioned is the underwriting, right? So from underwriting standpoint, uh, you know, uh, the way we work with our clients is one of the underwriters partners with two of ours. So they build a pod in that situation where an underwriter on our client side who was originally making a credit decision in two, three hours is now getting provided essentially a fully set up loan where they basically get, they basically do a quick QC and review and make credit decisions on loans set up with a team on our side. And they, and they know each other because they work together on a daily basis, right? So it makes a pretty big difference. So the team on our side, for example, can review all the AUS conditions, do all the income calculations, um, you know, credit income asset appraisal title reviews, calculate DTI, cash to close, et cetera, all the components that go into making a final decision. So we can come back and, and set it up for the underwriter and then they go from uh, decisioning maybe two, two and a half, three loans a day to potentially as high as, you know, six, eight, 10, 12 loans a day, depending on the loan type, of course. But we've seen those kind of results where our customers are making credit decisions in, uh, in 30 minutes, uh, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, right? So all of a sudden you've gone from, um, uh, you know, you, you've taken uh, a, a very expensive resource with two resources that, that, that come at a fraction of that cost. You, 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 you tripled your throughput and you basically taken your cost per loan down significantly. This is just an example of how you can do that. You know, so these examples are mostly origination focused. And as I look yeah. at this, the one thing I can tell you, uh, and I, I just happen to work for Verity, so I know these things too. Yeah. You know, if people ask me, well, what do you do? What are the mm -hmm. services you provide? Here's an easy way to think about it. If it's not customer facing, we probably do it. It's probably that simple. So it's the full origination through closing process. And oh, by the way, we go well beyond the origination space uh, as well. So uh, Sam, what do you have to add to that? Yeah, so we have uh, what we call core functions and, and ancillary functions. And that includes, uh, you know, we also do all the QC functions as pre-close, pre-close, post-close QC. We have a technology around the post-close QC service. Um, and then there's functions like HUMDA, post uh, PCCD, trailing docs. Uh, we have a full accounting division. So uh, that's an area of big lift for our customers because we have a team of offshore that is fully trained in AMB, loan vision, et cetera, and able to uh, essentially keep, uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Sam, you're way ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> I, jumped, I jumped ahead, yeah. So uh, we can provide uh, that kind of lift from an accounting standpoint and, you know, overnight keep, uh, you know, all the accounting systems up to date. Uh, we also have, um, you know, servicing functions that we do for, for our customers. Another big one is um, Encompass. We have, we have a fully trained, uh, we, are, we are a premier partner with, uh, with uh, ICE and uh, from an Encompass standpoint. We have a fully trained team uh, in India that is available to our customers at you know a fraction of the of the cost 
to be able to do a lot of the level one type functions. So they support the uh, more, ex uh, more experienced Encompass or more expensive Encompass admins in the United States. And a very common role for us is, uh, you know, they'll outsource uh, customers who have us managing the entire ticketing system, for example. We manage 100% of it and a lot of basic functions such that the more expensive Encompass admins on the client side are focused on the highest value work, which is doing projects and not getting bogged down with the day-to-day -day stuff because we can take care of that for them. So uh, one of the things I mentioned earlier to think about is, um, you know, by nature of us being a hybrid team, we have a domestic team, an offshore team and utilizing technology. We have some pretty cost competitive uh, uh, solutions around uh, providing uh, pre-fund post-close QC. And, uh, you know, one of the things via the platform is our customers benefit from a, uh, a highly automated uh, workflow that allows them to have full visibility into all the work that Verity is doing on a loan by loan and a step-by-step -step basis through a dashboard that's kind of not very visible with a lot of different technologies out there, different services out there. And um, we're able to do some more enhanced data-to-data, uh, doc-to-doc type comparisons that actually build more integrity into the overall QC service. And uh, the entire, if you look at the entire process, more than 40% is automated. So um, it, really, um, it really is something to, uh, to consider and look at because you can, you can gain a lot more uh, efficiency. You can get real time. This is essentially a real time platform. We do real time QC. And, uh, and also at a, at a more competitive price point than some of the other folks in the market. So, Sam, um, uh, you know, we, we probably have an exciting announcement to make, but, uh, you know, related to automation. So uh, are we ready to do that? Is this the early bird version of that? Yeah, sure. So, uh, so we uh, already, uh, it, it, we're officially going to announce this in January, but we're going to talk about it today is how, um, you know, we have, uh, uh, Verity has its own uh, automation platform, a bot automation technology that uh, we're currently building out a bunch of internal products to be able to bring that into the market. But the idea with, uh, with this is, you know, just like considerations given to tasks that you can outsource, you can also consider automation. And the idea behind that is, uh, you know, there's so many tasks that uh, are repetitive, time consuming, that even are performed by, uh, you know, a, a manual means that can now through technology be automated. And the idea is that, you know, we have, we have our customers doing the highest value work. And now we have our own team that's doing higher value work for which there's pieces that we can, we can, we can essentially carve out and automate. So it's a, it's a very interesting transition in how work is being done. Uh, it's actually quite incredible. And um, there is, uh, there's some examples of things that we can talk about, but you know, some of the things that to think about also are that uh, the model that we're introducing is gonna be essentially a transaction-based model for automation. So uh, you know, it's kind of a lot of companies struggle with, uh, especially when margins are getting squeezed, to you know, carve out money to spend for capital expenses and do big projects, you know, and, and maybe the results are mixed, maybe they're not. Uh, in lieu of that, uh, Verity, we're, we're offering because we have all the expertise on the process side and the and and you know we we understand the entire mortgage process really well. We're able to come back and bring in some pretty high success rates overall in terms of uh, automation. And they're more transaction-based, more OPEX, uh, more light OPEX costs versus heavy CAPEX costs. So- yeah, um, one of the, Go ahead, yeah. Sam. No, sorry, go ahead, Dave, what were you saying? No, I said one of the great things about this, about this acquisition is that uh, we're suddenly, uh, we suddenly own a very large library of uh, uh, robotic process automation, or RPA, uh, software components that we can assemble these bots with very quickly. And that's exciting because, you know, when this it's the whole time to market cost, cost uh, savings we can bring to our customers, just huge advantages to this whole uh, technology solution uh, and group of people that we're bringing on. Right. So, uh, so the approach that we're taking is not simply, you know, deliver a product, but we also have people on our team that are, lean manufacturing experts. Uh, these guys are Six Sigma black belts. 
And the idea behind that is they can study a process and they have expertise at, at breaking it down into pieces, minimizing waste, and then building it back up from components. So when we do that, not only can we automate a customer's process, we can come back with a way more efficient way to do the same thing. So um, you know, we're excited to bring that to market. I think it's gonna be very, very uh, beneficial for a lot of companies. Um, but Sam, so, it looks like I'm, as I click through these slides, I'm trying to move you along, but it's not my goal here. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing on time, Dave? We're doing good. Okay. So uh, if you want, I can quickly talk about that. In the last slide, there was an example of an automation. We can talk about that for a second. Oh, this one? one? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So here, here's an example of an automation uh, <clears throat> project that was done for a pretty, pretty large uh, lender. And the, um, what, they were able, what we were able to accomplish is uh, essentially there was 23 people that were spending their time uh, doing, uh, reviewing the, the SAM side, the website, and, get, and pulling down data to uh, basically do a, a fraud prevention, fraud check type, uh, type, uh, type uh, analysis that is performed by, what was, was performed by uh, their employees. And it was 23 employees doing this work, taking about 15 minutes, 20 minutes uh, per search. And uh, through automation, this work was uh, reduced down to and no employees and taking 15 seconds uh, per function. So there's a lot of powerful, um, there's a lot of powerful, uh, uh, you know, disruption in how work is gonna be done going forward in 22. So just, just an example. And if you wanna, anybody here on the webinar wants to see us, wants to see a demo of this, reach out to us, it's, it's pretty wild. <laughs> and then, you know, hey, this, this is a big one, uh, attrition, rehiring, training, recruiting, these are massive costs for a company to incur. Uh, you know, one of the considerations, if you look at a company like ours, uh, when you're outsourcing some of these functions is we're designed to scale up and down. Uh, you don't hurt our feelings when you have to scale the team back by 10, 15%, doesn't cause any kind of morale hit. <clears throat> we are uh, designed for, uh, uh, you know, basically ramping up, ramping down. Uh, the other thing is, um, Continuity. One of the things companies struggle with today is, hey, if I have a key employee and the market is so bad, and if I lose this person, what happens to my processes? Well, working with someone like us at the back end, you know, we're we're designed to have uh, backup and backup employees that are trained on the same process across the board, cross trained. So if one person goes, somebody else steps in the very next minute. So we're always on, uh, and uh, that makes a pretty big difference to our clients. Um, you know, we never go on vacation. What I mean by that is, you know, we have people that go on vacation, but Verity is up and working every single day that our clients are working. So, you know, basically you're getting every single business day that our clients are open. We're, we have work being produced by Verity. We don't come back and say, hey, you know, we're on vacation for the next two weeks. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Um, and then, you know, the other thing we found a lot is by uh, us being able to do a lot of the support work and our employees on the client side, being able to do more of the high value work, there's, there's actually been a morale boost. So, you know, that helps quite a bit as well. So uh, just some other things to think about, uh, you know, also when you look at your cost for recruiting overall SGNA, uh, because uh, at Verity uh, and companies like ours, you know, we incur the cost of the, uh, you know, uh, the computers and hardware, software benefits, health benefits, especially is a pretty big consideration. And, um, you know, hey, all the sandwiches and smoothies on Fridays, all that. I mean, we do all that. So our customers don't have to worry about that. You know, another part of that, uh, you alluded to it, but I, I don't know that I heard it specifically, but because we're a global workforce, we can work those hours that your folks aren't working as well as, you know, when your folks are working. So what that really means is your files are getting completed much faster. Your turn times are better. Uh, that means you're actually going to be in a position where you can close loans faster. And that obviously has a, a huge impact on customer yeah. experience and on, on really your cost, because, you know, that affects your warehouse lines, your hedge cost, and all those other factors that go into being able to close loan cleaner yeah. and faster. You're closing loans faster, you're selling loans faster. Your accounting systems can be up to date all the time. Um, Encompass projects are not falling behind, um, et cetera. So it makes a big difference.
Thank you. So we, we thank you for joining us today. That's it. Uh, please send us any questions or give us a ring. Uh, we'd be happy to answer those or if there was something in there that got your attention, whether it's the uh, RPA technology or any of the particular solutions, we'd be happy to walk you through that and uh, share what we know about it. So thanks, everyone. Anything from you, Sam? No, that's it. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, and guys, if you want to, to hang out five minutes, we'll let some people put some questions in chat if you want and just kind of stick around here. Um, but if there's no questions, then we can <coughs> sign off. Okay. All righty. Well, thank y'all so much and thank have you. a happy, happy weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.